Welcome to this demo series for the SAP integration suite where we demonstrate some of the ways to achieve principal propagation to on-premise backends in cloud integration and some advanced flows where it makes sense to put API management in front. In this part, we talk about the problem statements and the complexities involved. So let's get started. Before we get into the solution space, let's look at what are the scenarios that are supported today. So the flow that today is documented is when a client calls into a tenant of the cloud integration, then the user context essentially is passed as basic into an on-premise system, which is governed by a cloud connector, right? So if I can go to the product documentation page, so you see that this is a scenario which is actually well documented, right? So you have ways to set up a cloud connector and it clearly makes a note that you should always be using basic authentication. Just to demonstrate this, if I can actually go to my CPI UI and this is a very simple iFlow and what I've done is I'm actually connecting into a very simple HTTP endpoint and and you see that the authentication is actually set to basic and I'm pulling in the credentials via this security material. And this itself is nothing but the client ID secret, which I get from the instance of, of this process integration runtime, right? That's really what is possible today in Cloud Foundry. So let's quickly implement this scenario just to demonstrate what works. So this is my, my endpoint. And if I invoke my iFlow endpoint, with the username and password. So you see that it actually goes into an instance of my cloud connector that I actually have set up. And this is a very simple setup where I'm actually just creating a cloud connector over HTTP bin. And what you see in the response is the fact that there is an authorization header, which obviously is composed of the basic credentials itself, right? So the question is, does this meet your use case? Uh, if yes, then great. But what we see is that customers want to really uh, implement a flavor of a real principal propagation by actually passing user certificates from the cloud connector, right? So that's the scenario that we will implement. So one of the most natural ways to try would be to then just shift this from basic into principal propagation, right? So you see that this is something that the tool allows. Of course, it's got other options as well. But you see that client certificate is obviously grayed out because you really cannot be sending a certificate anyway because Cloud Connector has its own nuances there. Uh, but let's try with principal propagation. This is something that uh, was actually possible in the Neo editions. So if I save this and I deploy, okay, let's deploy. And now that the deployment is complete, if I go ahead and call the scenario again, right? So I'm actually doing the same thing. It actually fails. And the reason why it actually fails is if you look at the, the failed messages, then um, very clearly we see that the platform is trying to do an internal handshake and it obviously did not find some of the scopes that was expected. And that's the reason why internally it's not able to route the call uh, to the cloud connector with principal propagation set. So that's a challenge. And I'd like to also tell you that this challenge exists uh, even with certificate based authentication, right? So you could also have done a certificate based authentication instead of doing a client ID secret. And let me show that to you real quick. So you see that I'm invoking the same endpoint, right? But what I'm also doing this time around is I'm trying to explicitly pass a certificate, okay? And I should tell you that I've configured a service key to accept uh, this certificate and then evaluate the certificate. So this, this should ideally have worked, but now that we've set the authentication to principal propagation, and if I now, now do a send, you see that it actually fails uh, practically with the same error message. So this is not helping us, right? So what do we do? And this is what we, what at least ideally we expect, right? Ideally we expect that the user context be available to us as principal propagation. 
and cloud connector should ideally do the rest of the handshake which is to validate the incoming request pull the user subject from a mapped context and then do its bit with respect to how it would uh, then generate a short-lived x509 certificate and then send this uh, to the SAP backend system right so this is what uh, customers have done in the past and this is this is obviously a challenge because when we use the client credentials grant type unfortunately there is no way that the resulting JWT token can actually be decorated with the user context because all we have in the JWT token are actually references to the client ID and secret itself but not the user context which is needed for us to successfully establish single sign-on so next in this video series we look at two specific ways of solving this problem one by using the password flow grant type and the other being the saml to bearer grant type by putting api management in front